welcome to the diplomat. Overseas travel was fully liberalized in 1989, and with 2019 being the 30th anniversary, over 30 million people are expected to travel abroad. Croatia, in particular, is one of the holiday destinations growing fastest in popularity among Korean travelers. The country also opened its embassy in Seoul at the end of the last year. Therefore, today on The Diplomat, we sit down with the first Croatian ambassador to Korea, Damir Kusen, to talk about the ever-expanding developments between the two countries. Ambassador, thank you very much for joining us today. Dr. Kang, thank you very much indeed. Uh, I'm very grateful that you have interest for Croatia. Um, first of all, Croatian Embassy opened October in last year. So how do you feel being the first ambassador to Korea? Uh, indeed, we have opened uh, formally the Embassy of Croatia uh, in Korea at the end of October last year. Uh, it means that we are here just for three months. Uh, as a diplomat, I can't say how privileged and honored I am to serve as the first residential Croatian ambassador in Korea. Korea is a remarkable country. You manage uh, to make magnificent progress and reform from a devastated country to the top leading world economy with vibrant society, with rich culture. And I think it's a challenge and privilege for every diplomat to serve here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Um, then what does the Croatian embassy opening mean to um, when it comes to the bilateral ties and also development of two nations' relations? By all means, it would be a very significant step forward. Uh, I'm very happy to say that uh, bilateral relations between our two countries are perfect, despite that we have just opened the embassy. Korean embassy in Zagreb is open uh, long ago in 2005. It means that uh, we have, uh, in the meantime, did a lot in our bilateral relations, established uh, the whole legal platform of bilateral agreements. And now I think with the opening of the embassy here, we just upgrade in a way to really to do far more to, to encourage cooperation in all areas. Mm -hmm. um, I guess your few last months has been very busy adjusting yourself to a new country and also meeting the diverse needs of Koreans visiting Croatia. Yeah. How have you been? <laughs> I mean, for, for, for the first three months, the, with the fact that we just uh, set up the new office, uh, it suggests that uh, sometimes I was, let's say, more engineer than diplomat because to set up the office means a lot of organizational, technical things to do. But in the last three months, we had a quite busy period. We had the visit, official visit of the Croatian foreign minister. Mm -hmm. She was here at the opening ceremony of the embassy. We also had the visit of the Minister of Labor and Economy. Mm -hmm. We signed the agreement on social security mm -hmm. issue. Uh, we had a number of delegations, mainly from academic field. It means that we had a quite three busy months, but that's exactly what we need. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, Croatia is one of the most popular tourist destinations um, of the whole world. What is the secret? I mean, the secret, uh, uh, let's say that the secret is based on the natural beauty uh, of the country 
And I think that this kind of the secrets uh, both our countries share, because Korea is also blessed with the natural beauties. Mm -hmm. When we come to the Croatia, I mean, what uh, is quite highly attractive for Korean people and for tourists coming from all around the world is very rich historical and cultural heritage. Mm -hmm. But something that was the main trigger uh, and put Croatia in the focus of Korean people uh, is the fact that uh, one of the Korean reality travel show was filmed in Croatia and by all means broadcasted to the Korean TV stations. Uh, it was, uh, I would say, enormous step forward in the interest of Korean people to Croatia. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, speaking of tourism, tourism is one of the biggest pillars um, yeah. of Croatian economy. Yeah. Um, how big is it really? I mean, if I put the lenses as that from statistical point of view, last year we had uh, more than 18 million foreign tourists in Croatia. Uh, it's more than four times population of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, coming to the, let's say, percentage of the GDP that is usually indicated to show the, what is the power of the one industry in the structure of economy, it could be around 15%. But tourism is interlinked and directly related with transport, with uh, all kinds of services, mm -hmm. um, food and wine industry. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, let, let's, I prefer to have comprehensive approach mm -hmm. uh, to see what the tourism means for the country. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, then how would you describe Korea in regards to Croatian um, tourism industry? I mean, it's uh, uh, the fact that we had a half million Korean people last year uh, in Croatia, uh, and this is 12% of the Croatian total population. Just this kind of illustration brings that we are really talking about the big interest of Korean people. Uh, suggests that really this is the people-to-people -people way to put the contacts between two countries. Uh, field of tourism is really not just the count of the people who travel but open many ideas, many initiatives, many projects. And as the follow-up of the many people who paid a visit to Croatia, now we have uh, different initiatives, either in business, academic field, or any other. It means that tourism really is, goes far beyond uh, just the fact that somebody is staying there for a few weeks. Of course, the tourism somehow has the permanent innovation process, because there are so many beautiful places worldwide. Mm -hmm. And somehow uh, our job at the moment is to keep up this number, to increase this number, and request really the large team to, to do it together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right. Um, Seoul became the first Croatia um, direct Far East so far. And um, what does the launch of this direct mean? And also, what kind of results do you expect to yield? We are, we are very happy that, that Korean Air opened a direct flight to Zagreb, from Incheon to Zagreb, since 1st of September last year. Uh, three times per week. Uh, for us, uh, this is the way, by all means, that fits well our tourist strategy. But uh, this, this flight goes far beyond the fact of the two cities connected at the moment. It's the first Asian flight to Croatia. It has a symbolism that goes far beyond just to bring the tourist people in one way or, or, or back. And we are very happy. I think that this kind of trigger might be recognized by some other air companies in the other countries and also to encourage more air links to Croatia. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more and more business people coming to Croatia by this Korean air flight and somehow I, I can say that I also personally use this flight and, and uh, this is exactly what is the best possible way mm -hmm. to bring two countries a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. uh, as you just mentioned, Croatia is already a very popular um, tourist destination but still, um, what kinds of efforts are being made to attract even more tourists? Yeah. I mean, uh, that's one of priorities of, of my job. Uh, after all, the tourism is the best possible uh, way to approach another country. Uh, I'm very happy to, to inform uh, that we are practically in the final stage of bringing Croatian National Tourist Board's office a representative in, in Seoul. Mm -hmm. It will be the first time uh, that we have professional people in the field of tourism with budget behind. And then I'm sure that with uh, 
their approach that we, can, we will manage to keep up with a large number of Korean people who might find the interest uh, in Croatia. Besides that, we are planning the number of activities to promote ourselves. Uh, but as I said, tourism also goes in both way. We would like to see also more Croatian people coming to this beautiful country. Mm, I see. Um, our bilateral exchange and cooperation, I understand that it began long time ago, even before the boom of tourism. Yeah, yeah. Um, could you tell us about that? I mean, Croatia in the modern sense uh, proclaimed independence and was recognized by international community uh, in the 91-92 period. Uh, since then, of course, we had to establish our diplomatic network worldwide. Um, we start with bilateral cooperation with the large part of the world, wherever we can find some interest and where we can find some interest on the other side. Uh, in practice, beside, despite that we didn't have the embassy here based in Seoul, we practically have all bilateral agreements between two countries as a kind of the platform for strong bilateral cooperation. It means since 1992 when Korea, among the first countries in Asia, recognized independence of Croatia, we have very, very strong cooperation. Uh, large companies from Korea were in the period uh, in Croatia where we were practically looking for our independence. They supported Croatia with the fact they still operate there, and, and we are very grateful. This is something that Croatia as a country is very grateful to Korea for the permanent assistance and help since the period when we established our independence to, to today. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I see. Um, it's no doubt that um, the bilateral economic, especially economic um, exchange and cooperation will enter into a new phase uh, with the new opening of Croatian embassy in Korea. Um, could you tell us more about the current status of our economic um, cooperation and exchanges? Yeah, I'm very happy to, to, to answer this question because this is exactly what is priority of the, any diplomacy and Croatian embassy and me as well. Uh, at the moment, the trade exchange between Croatia and Korea is approximately a quarter billion dollars uh, in both ways with uh, in favor of Korea. Uh, what uh, is the main advantage in, in the future trade and economic cooperation is the fact that Croatia joined European Union six years ago. Uh, it means that uh, free trade agreement between between Korea and Croatia as a part of European Union opened the space for a lot of cooperation in the different fields of trade, business and investment. When we come to the bilateral interest, I mean, Croatia uh, is indeed one of the best gateways to Europe, mm -hmm. port of calls. Mm -hmm. We have the few co uh, ports in Croatia that really can make the travel of the cargo vessels from Korea, bringing the goods to European markets mm -hmm. much closer. It means that Croatia is very deep in the central Europe and both bringing the Korean goods to the huge European single market. It's, it's, it's a perfect opportunity. Mm -hmm. European single market means 500 million people meet purchase capacity. Mm -hmm. And the transit through the Croatian ports mm -hmm. is something that is more and more recognized by the number of Asia Pacific Australian countries, the area and, and the companies. Mm -hmm. It means that by all means we expect more and more uh, Korean vessels coming to our ports. Uh, this is what is based on the specific geographical position of Croatia. But when we come to the core business, of course, that we uh, work uh, strongly to encourage cooperation in the field of energy, infrastructure. Mm. Um, in the, uh, we, are, we are building the LNG terminal in Croatia that we think that Korea might find interest as well. Mm -hmm. Croatia somehow is positioned in this energy map of Europe more and more. But something also as well that uh, where, where Korea is magnificently strong in the car manufacturing industry, mm -hmm. uh, in electronics. Mm -hmm. uh, Croatia could offer perfect distribution hubs, mm -hmm. huge hubs for, for, Korean, mm -hmm. uh, for Korean products. Mm -hmm. For instance, one of the international airports in Croatia, uh, Osijek, is specialized in the cargo fields mm -hmm. and practically in a few hours by car or by lorry to six or seven European capitals. Mm -hmm. From Zagreb to Vienna to Budapest mm -hmm. uh, to Belgrade to Sarajevo. It means that any kind of that kind of cooperation for us, it's very realistic and benefits of both mm -hmm. countries. And I think it's very likely. Uh, of course, we are planning to work on the number of business forums, presentations. I'm very happy to say that Kotra is very active in Croatia mm -hmm. for years, for as long as the embassy is there from 2005. Mm -hmm. 
But besides Cotra, we have uh, all bilateral agreements in that field. It means that uh, we have uh, protection of investments, uh, agreements, avoidance of double taxation, uh, FTA through the European Union framework. We have agreement between investments and development banks, Croatian and Korean. Mm -hmm. uh, all that platform uh, exists. And now I think that we will be witness really a significant increase in the mutual trade and investments between two countries. Um, then what areas um, does Croatia hope to see more investments from Korea? And also, um, how will Korean companies benefit from um, investing in Croatia? I mean, the, the fact that Croatia is a, a member of the European Union, uh, by all means, could be a way for benefits of a lot of Korean companies. Uh, if we concentrate on something that I think should be one of the main line of cooperation is in the field of uh, science, innovation and technology. Uh, in Europe, this is priority field. Horizon 2020 or Horizon Europe has the new financial program uh, based on, on uh, uh, billions and billions of euros to support small and medium enterprises, scientific projects, whatever is in the field of bringing those who produce the knowledge and those who utilize the knowledge closer together. It means academic field and industry, mainly in the field of science, innovation and technology. And that's exactly any science team where Koreans and Croatians or whoever else from the European Union could work together would be very easily with a mechanism that exists perfectly be financed by European Union funds. And this is exactly what we need in the all fields of industry. I think that we should utilize more and more innovations, more science, more technology right. to bring better products, mm -hmm. to, to develop better services mm -hmm. for, for the sake of, of, the, of, the, of the better service to customers. Mm -hmm. and, and this is the area that somehow I think uh, it's far from the level it should be, uh, be, because somehow it's always the masterpiece of those who can bring uh, academic field and industry together. Mm -hmm. Korea is a perfect example of the country that invests 4% of the GDP in research and development, mm -hmm. and this is by all means one of the main engines of the marvelous high technology uh, and prosperity of your country. And th this is what I think is, is in Europe, the question that we would like to cooperate in that way uh, much more. Mm -hmm. um, let me switch our topic. Um, could you share your insights about the peace process on the Korean Peninsula? I believe the um, second North and the U.S. summit is also upcoming as well. Yeah. I mean, Croatia fully supports all initiatives and efforts by President Moon Jae-in. I mean, it's, uh, we perfectly understand what does it mean to have stability and peace. Uh, Croatia, uh, as a part of the European Union, follows that agenda and is happy and ready to, to help wherever we can. But there is something specific in Croatia because three decades ago, uh, we had the troubles in our region. Uh, the knowledge that Croatia accumulated uh, from the fact that it was uh, the victim of aggression of that time of the Yugoslav communist army and the Serbian regime of that time uh, is uh, knowledge that uh, we are very happy to share. We perfectly understand that uh, any kind of the post-conflict management or process is very complex. Mm. I mean, uh, peace reconciliation, uh, um, building mac trust building mechanism, uh, building confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that really requires the patience, long-term objectives, and the people with, with, with the knowledge. I, I'm, I'm absolutely uh, glad to say that uh, with uh, uh, peaceful reintegration of the large part of Croatia that previously were occupied, with a number of initiatives, measures, mechanism that we developed some three decades ago with full sensitivity of how it's difficult and complex, that we can share in the moment when it would be phase in the, in the peace process uh, with, with your country. Uh, uh, people who, are, who didn't uh, uh, experience uh, how complex, any society is complex, but the, to make uh, post-conflict management and bringing closer uh, to people request uh, a really lot of patience and a lot of management skills, a lot of knowledge in the field, a lot of tolerance. Mm -hmm. And that's something that uh, uh, Croatia is always very happy and ready uh, to share with. Uh, we, by all means, believe that the process of the, uh, exactly as it goes in that way, with the 
total full denuclearization uh, and somehow commitment to the long-lasting peace would be in the benefit of everyone. And, and uh, in that sense, uh, uh, I think that I share the view of uh, all my colleagues, either from European Union or other countries, that uh, uh, we can only uh, help and, and wish for the long-lasting peace and stability mm -hmm. in the peninsula. Mm -hmm. uh, but as I said, we fully understand that it's uh, sometimes very hard uh, to define the, the pace, how quick something to do, but the patience is sometimes crucial and to recognize every single small step that leads towards the better better final solution and finally with a lot of lot of tolerance that should be mm -hmm. basis uh, for, for cooperation and mutual understanding. Mm -hmm. Confidence building measures and trust building uh, is a very complex process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm confident that uh, in the years to come uh, we will see more more prosperous uh, peninsula. After all, uh, we all know that it's very hard to find consensus in the history. Right. Uh, but I think it's uh, far more easier to find consensus in the future. Mm -hmm. And consensus in the future should be based on prosperity mm -hmm. and better life for the people. Mm -hmm. That's what I think uh, all sides would share and then all would find the interest to work on that. Mm -hmm. Finally, I mean, the neighbors are neighbors forever. It means that it's, uh, it's perfect to do whatever is manageable to bring a better life and cooperation mm -hmm. uh, between the people. Um, Ambassador, before we wrap up our interview, could you share your plans as the first residence ambassador to Korea? Uh, I have a quite ambitious agenda, but uh, in uh, just a few words, uh, I think that we will really manage to initiate a number of projects that would bring our two countries closer uh, in the field of trade, business and investments uh, in the field of academic cooperation. Uh, I'm very happy to say that we already have uh, six or seven bilateral agreements between Croatian and Korean universities. Mm -hmm. uh, I will be uh, very keen to visit a number of other Korean universities around Korea. Uh, I think that academic cooperation is extremely important. It's long-lasting. Mm -hmm. We would encourage exchange of students, professors, scientific projects. That's what I think it's a, it's a priority that would bring uh, results very, very quick. Uh, when we come to the field of science, innovation and technology, I think there is a lot of what we should work together. Uh, promotion of tourism, uh, what is the topic that we have started our discussion, it's the easiest way uh, with uh, professional people coming as representative of Croatian National Tourist Boards. I think that this is the area that we would be more and more visible here. But in the same way, let me tell you that a few days ago, uh, it was a documentary program on Korea at the main Croatian National TV, uh, done by Croatian journalists, and uh, just encouraged this wonderful, impeccable image that Croatia has towards your beautiful country. Mm -hmm. Ambassador, what do you think a diplomat means in one word or one sentence? In one word? I would say that a diplomat is a, a bridge builder. To extend my, my view, I think that if we really have to tell in one word, in that case, this is a bridge between two countries. Uh, bridge that is based on institutional links, on people to people, or trade, on all what I have been said. But I think beside the thousands of definitions of diplomacy, this is one that after almost three decades of experience uh, I have in the foreign service. Uh, it's something that I'm not, not just committed to do, to do, but I'm very proud of. I mean, the way that uh, building the bridge between two countries, you bring two countries close as possible, this is the wonderful feeling. And this is, I think, the, the main point of diplomacy, bilateral diplomacy. Of course, in multilateral diplomacy, it's a little bit else. We build to work the peace and to help the nations worldwide. But in a bilateral thing that I can say that uh, for the last almost three decades, I was a uh, uh, bridge builder. Ambassador, thank you very much for your time and also sharing your insights with us today. Thank you, Dr. Kang. I mean, it's, I can't say how I was privileged to be part of your program. I'm very grateful for your interest for Croatia and, and I think that both countries would benefit and be as close as possible in the future time. Thank you. Thank you. Kumapsimnida. <laughs> Kumapsimnida.
Bible class in the South.